Hello everyone, and welcome to my canteen guide for Monster Hunter World. The canteen is where you give yourself a whole bunch of powerful buffs right before going off onto your quests. It's something expert players understand really well, yet it's just complicated enough that new players aren't going to be getting the most out of it, and that's kind of what I want to help you with. Every time you eat a meal at the canteen, you end up mixing four different kind of like buff groups together if you want to think of them as groups. The first one is going to be health boost and stamina. It's mostly just health boost. The second one is you, you choose between your, your choice of attack up, defense up, or elemental resist. It depends on how you eat. The third group is going to be you trying to get a feline food skill. And the last group is going to be you trying to get a daily food skill. Okay, so that's the four groups. Each of these four buffs are decided by how you build your meal. A meal is made out of six ingredients. You should kind of already know that ingredients are unlocked by finishing all of the quests. There's special assignments given to you by like researchers uh, and simply by harvesting from the gathering points on the map, such as in the wild spire waste, there's going to be like these cacti, you just gather from them. In the uh, elders recess, there's going to be red and blue amber, you just gather from, uh, very randomly, you're going to be getting like, like if you haven't collected the ingredients that you can earn from elders recess, if you just keep collecting from those, eventually you'll get those ingredients, it's random, okay? Finishing your collection of ingredients gives you better access to certain feline food skills. Also, if you're, let's say you're missing a few uh, ingredients and you join a session where your friend has those ingredients, the game gives you access to your friend's ingredients. So that's kind of a big deal, right? So now you know about the four different groups of buffs you'll be eating for at the canteen, and you know that you should be finishing your collection of ingredients or playing with others in a session. If you're looking to join more multiplayer sessions, don't forget I have a Discord server. It's got like 6,000 people. Well, it's got over 6,000 people in it now. Uh, we, we're all playing Monster Hunter. I'm playing Monster Hunter especially. If you want to play with me, join that Discord. I have a link in the description of the video. Uh, and there, we have LFG channels. You can go over to those channels, try to ping people, and ask them to join your session. Moving on, I want to break down how you should go about building a meal. Let's go ahead and click on Custom Platter. See these four tabs at the top? They divide your ingredients by meat, fish, veggies, and drinks. Every two pieces of meat is going to give you a new level of attack up. Every two pieces of fish increases your defense up buff. And every two pieces of vegetables increases your elemental resist buff. Uh, drinks are kind of their own thing. They increase your rewards, so I, I'm not going to talk about them as much. So, if I build my meal out of six meat, Over here, under status effects, you're going to see that I'm now getting attack up large. And I'm guaranteed to get attack up large as long as I eat those meats. Now you know status effects. On the left hand of the ingredient table, you can see that there's five rows divided by color. This is the part that I think confuses a lot of players, especially new players. Those rows divide the ingredients by feline food skills. This is a different type of buff. So all the meat in the top row belongs to the courage skill. If you want a courage feline food skill, you add them to your meal. You just add that top row. By clicking the select button on your controller, you can actually get a list of all those skills and how many ingredients you need in order to activate them. Let's talk about that a little bit. Notice, feline polisher. What does it do? It increases your sharpening speed and you need two courage ingredients. That's two ingredients from the top row. Feline Rider lets you deal more mount damage and requires four courage ingredients. And finally, Feline Slugger, which is the most expensive, gives you more stun damage but requires six courage ingredients. So you have to take all six ingredients from the top row. Now, an important part to understand is that those rows, while the way they work, you can mix them from any of those first three tabs, meat, fish, and veggies. So here you can watch me build for Feline Slugger and an attack up small, a defense up small, and elemental resist small. And I'm doing that because I'm taking two pieces of meat from the top row, two pieces of fish from the top row, and two veggies from the top row. Technically, I have six courage ingredients, but I'm only getting the small buffs for attack, defense, and elemental resist because I only have two meat, two fish, two veggies. Does that make sense? Uh, later, I'll be talking to you about which feline food skills are best for your situation, but let's finish talking about how to build your meal. At this point, you're aware of status effects, attack up, defense up, elemental resist, 
and you're aware of feline food skills, you know, feline polisher, feline slugger, right? But what are daily skills? Daily skills, in my opinion, Capcom didn't name them very well because they don't actually update each day. <laughs> they update every time you come back for a quest. Every time you sit down to eat, you should be looking at the daily skills to see if feline insurance is available. Okay, so look down at the bottom right hand corner of your screen and check for feline insurance. This is a really important buff. Uh, so feline insurance, what it does is it gives you another life and that makes it one of the best buffs in the game. And if it's available, you're going to eat for it. Notice by default, when you're building a meal, that all of your food skills start out as the daily skills. So the way they work is you get those if you don't build any feline food skills. But as soon as you get the necessary ingredients into your, your meal for an actual feline skill, it overwrites one of the daily food skills. So one of the daily food skills goes bye-bye and you get a feline food skill instead. So you can actually overwrite all of the daily food skills if you build for three separate feline food skills. And you're actually able to do this. I'll just assemble a meal with three feline food skills by eating two ingredients from three different ingredient rows. See? So now, instead of the daily skills, I'll be getting feline polisher, feline acrobat, and feline riser. Since I have six pieces of meat, notice I'm also going to be getting attack up large as my status effect. But what if feline insurance was on the list for daily skills and I didn't want to override it with a different buff? You can eat a meal and avoid overriding it by simply eating one ingredient from each of the rows. Remember, by default, to get a feline food skill, you need at least two ingredients. So if you're just eating one ingredient from each of the rows, you're never going to trigger that. You're also gonna to have to take a drink with you. Alternatively, from building this yourself, from the menu, you can actually just scroll over to the unpredictable platter, and it's already assembled a meal which is designed to give you just the daily food skills. The other thing this pre-built meal does is it selects as many fresh ingredients as possible, which is the next thing we're going to talk about. Fresh ingredients, what are they and why do we care? They're actually really, really important. Those food skills we've been learning about, daily skills, feline skills, they aren't guaranteed to be given to you when you eat, right? So the status effect is guaranteed. Attack up large, that's guaranteed. But feline food skills and daily food skills, those are not guaranteed. You have this thing in the game called an activation chance that shows you the odds of your food skill activating. So it actually has to activate. Each fresh ingredient in your meal increases your odds of them activating by one sixth of a chance. So yeah, fresh ingredients are a big deal. They're also handing out the fourth buff that you get from the canteen and that would be the health boost. No matter what you eat, you're always gonna get 50 stamina, but Fresh ingredients are what's increasing your health by up to 50. Is the health boost super important? Not necessarily. That's because when you get into your quest, you can just eat a max potion and it maxes out your health bar. But if you can't afford to spend a max potion at the beginning of every quest you go out on, you might just prioritize eating only fresh ingredients for your canteen buff so that you always get that plus 50 health. You can do this very quickly by choosing the preset meal called Chef's Choice Platter, which prioritizes fresh ingredients over everything else. Note how that also means Chef's Choice Platter is also going to give you a 100% activation chance for the food skills. And remember, that's because uh, the Chef's Choice Platter is coming only with fresh ingredients, right? So you get your 50 health boost, but you may run into this other problem where you may not get the status effect you want and the food skills that would be optimal for your situation or build, you're probably gonna miss out on those as well. I mean, you could be lucky and it just gives you everything you want, but that's all luck. Also, the feline food skills might be overriding a valuable daily skill like feline insurance. Just another thing to keep an eye on. All right, we've talked about fresh ingredients, so now I should explain what a meal voucher does. This is about paying for your meal. Meal vouchers are a reward item that you can earn in the arena as well as from some event quests like greeting the gluttons, for example, is a really good one. When you pay for a meal using a voucher, the activation chance goes up to 100% no matter what ingredients you choose. Really good, right? And this allows you to have much more build flexibility because you aren't constrained to choosing fresh ingredients for your food skills. You can just build exactly what you want. So be sure to farm up meal vouchers and use them for difficult fights. I should also mention when you use a meal voucher that everyone in the session with you gets the benefits of the meal voucher as well. This is just another reason 
why you should be playing with a full session of players. Now that we've talked about all canteen buff groups and how they work, let's sit down and pretend I'm going to eat a meal. I'm going to imagine that we're about to go out against a monster that deals high fire damage, so let's pretend it's Arch-Tempered Lunastra. Notice how my fire resistance on my current build is only at 11, so I'm going to put a meal together that puts me past the 20 fire resistance threshold, and this should give me much better defense. I'll also be paying using a meal voucher, so I'm guaranteed to get my feline food skills and daily food skills. Let's choose custom platter and scroll over to the veggies tab. Veggies give me elemental resistance, remember? Each level of the elemental resistance buff will increase my elemental resistance by 5, so I only need elemental resist medium. That's going to give me 10. I've also decided that I want to eat feline moxie as my feline food skill, and that's going to require six ingredients from the resilience row. Feline moxie, of course, works like guts. So first I'll add four veggies into the meal. Now I have elemental resist medium, that's gonna take me up to 21 fire resist. And then I'm going to scroll over to the meat ingredients and finish moxie off with two more ingredients from the resilience row, and that's going to give me uh, attack up small as well. So I've got elemental resist medium and attack up small. When I join the Arch-Tempered Lunastra quest, I'm going to have to eat a max potion because I didn't get a good health boost from the canteen. Alright, if you watched up to this point, you should have a much better idea of what you can do with the canteen. Now I'm going to talk about the most important buffs you can eat for. My number one choice has to be the daily food skill feline insurance. It gives your team an extra life, and nothing really compares with that. Speedrunners obviously don't care about feline insurance because dying would ruin their completion time anyways, but for everyone else, this is your top choice, and you should always look to the bottom right hand of your screen to see whether the daily skills are going to include feline insurance, okay? So you sit down, before you even think about anything else, just check for feline insurance. I've been told feline insurance stacks as well. I haven't tested it, but I've been told that's true. After feline insurance, I would say the next best buff you can eat is for 50 health, but that's only if you are not going to be eating a max potion at the start of your quest. So what I'm saying is if you're like a new player saving up your max potions, you don't really want to use them, go ahead and just eat the chef's choice platter to max out your health, and you'll just accept whatever other buffs come with it. After that, I would say eating elemental resistance is also a big deal, especially if you're fighting a monster with high damage elemental attacks. Elemental resistance gives you immunity to blights. This is why it's so good. But you have to reach a threshold of 20 elemental resistance for that elemental type. And it reduces damage as well. So it's doing two things, blight, immunity, and damage reduction. For speedrunners, the answer would have just been taking attack up large almost every time. No one should be taking the defense up buff, neither speedrunners, no one should be taking the defense up buff because defense is really not that strong in Monster Hunter World. Next, I'm going to rank some of the feline food skills that really stand out. Uh, the first I would say is Feline Moxie, which works exactly like the gut skills. It can save you from a high damage one hit KO, leaving you with just one health point. Notice if you're standing in lava or taking any other kind of chip damage, like maybe versus Valhazak, Moxie is not really gonna work for you, right? It's gonna activate and it's gonna, it's gonna save your life by one health, and then you're gonna take a chip damage hit and it's going to immediately kill you. So it's, it has limited usefulness. Then we have Feline Heroics. I don't recommend this for almost anyone, but I do want to talk about it. Feline Heroics is going to give you the largest damage boost that you can get from the canteen, but it's incredibly tricky to use because you basically have to be a touch away from dying, right? You have to have a very small health bar in order for it to activate. I'm told it does not stack with regular heroics either, and if you're a speedrunner, it's really not going to work with any kind of health regeneration or peak performance. So uh, I, I, I have heard you can reach the highest damage with heroics, but it's just so high risk that most people will never use this. A feline specialist is a good one. It helps you deal more ailment damage, which is great for people using a weapon like the Kiar Paralysis Insectglaive. Feline sharpshooter should be eaten when you're using a bowgun where you're building for normal ammo. So if I'm using like the support light bowgun, then I want to eat feline sharpshooter to increase my damage with my normal ammo too. I'm not sure if you should be eating it when you use a bow. Can any bow experts tell us in the comment section if it's optimal for bows or if we should be taking a different buff? 
and Feline Bombardier is kind of a big deal. It increases the damage of Gunlance Shell damage, Bowgun Sticky Ammo, and even Cannon damage which is relevant for players who are going up against Arch-Tempered Zora Magdaros. So I use this buff pr pretty much all the time, pretty much all the time, yeah. And then we have Feline Pyro, which is useful for saving on Devil's Blight Mushrooms when fighting Kul'v Taroth, because it automatically upgrades your Large Barrel Bombs to Mega Barrel Bombs when you set them down. I should also mention for the food skills that Feline Carver, which is one of the skills you get from the drinks, that one's giving you more carves, and Lucky Cat, and Lucky Cat, which is also from the drinks, is increasing the reward items at the end of your quest. Remember these? These are for increasing your rewards. So use these when you're farming for gems. All right, and that's the end of my canteen guide. If you learned something new, consider giving me a like and leaving some feedback. I'm gonna thank you all for watching and I'll see you guys next time.